finger strength. This is the part in climbing that is probably the most crucial towards one's performance. And a discussion that never seems to end is how you improve on this, how you improve on your finger strength. I would argue that all kinds of stuff work, but campusing is what I've been using to get most of my finger strength. The thing is, the result has been that I've gotten really strong at bigger and better holds, as well as big moves, but I've never gotten quite so strong at tiny crimps. So today, we're gonna take a look at a pretty crazy new finger training schedule that I've been trying out where I've been using a hangboard two times per day. However, before we start, I just want to mention that you should not take any of the information as an absolute science because we have a sample size of one. So for this video, just try and join in on the science and interesting stuff behind my results and try and not think of everything as a formula for success. Anyhow, now that I've absolved myself from liability, let's take a look at what I'm actually measuring. So back in January, before I started training my fingers two times per day, I tried these five different hangs. First, it was a 5 second hang from the Beastmaker 2000 crimp, which is about 14 millimeters wide. With this one, I could hang for about 2 to 3 seconds with 47, 48 kilograms, and I think it maxed out at around 40 kilograms. The second one is to do a one arm hang of the 2000 middle crimp, which is about 20 millimeters deep. This, <laughs> I could hold for maybe half a second on the right and left arm, maybe not even that. Third off, I wanted to try different small edges. So I started off on the six millimeter edge, which I've never ever been able to hang off of. And today was no exception. Second off, I hung on the eight millimeter edge and managed to do a, for me, quite long hang. And lastly, I tried to do a hang off of the 10 millimeter edge, which is considerably larger. And therefore I managed to hang for quite some time. In all honesty, my results were pretty much exactly what I expected, as it was about the same as I get on most other days when I try these things out. Now it's soon time to take a look at the program that I've been doing. It's largely based on this study from Keith Barr titled Minimizing Injury and Maximizing Return to Play Lessons from Engineered Ligaments. And it essentially states that injuries such as a ruptured pulley or a sprained ankle would account for more than 70% of time away from different sports. Since my brother Felix is the one who introduced me to the program as well as the article, I'm gonna let him explain the fundamentals of it. Hello. Okay, tell us about the, uh, the article. Yeah, so uh, a few months ago I was sent an article by a physiotherapist I know. Uh, and in the article they studied the repair of uh, tendons, well actually ligaments, and they took clones of, a, of an ACL and put it under various frequencies and intensities of strain. And what they concluded was that for the repair of the tendon, the intensity and the frequency actually didn't matter. And also that uh, after about 10 minutes of, uh, of exercise, uh, the molecular response actually stopped. And on top of that, they also found that it takes about six hours for, this, for the muscle to become responsive again to this kind of stimuli. So I thought, well, basically ligaments and tendons are practically the same thing. So maybe I can try and apply this to climbing and uh, finger tendons. So I designed a program and this is basically the conclusion of this article. So I didn't just make this up on my own. Um, where I, two or three times a day, exercise my fingers very lightly for about 10 minutes uh, on the hangboard. Um, With that as our baseline, let's take a look at what I actually did as having high intensity would simply increase the risk of injury without actually strengthening my fingers, what I did was something called no hangs. It's the same principle as hangboarding, but instead of actually hanging, I simply stood on the ground and progressively loaded my fingers, which creates a molecular response. The program was to do 10 minutes of no hangs, where I went 10 seconds on and then 50 seconds off between each hang. I first held a half crimp position for three sets each, followed by this, was something that's called the three finger drag, essentially keeping your hand as open as possible and then just <laughs> pretty much dragging the board down. I also held this position for three sets. And after those three sets, we were up to six minutes of hanging, meaning that we have four hangs left to go. So the four remaining hangs consisted of, well, 
just one set each of each hang. Starting off with the middle two pocket. I held this for 10 seconds as well, just like I did with the rest of the exercises. And followed by this one was the front two pocket. So it's essentially I just altered between the different pockets to get as much variety as possible. Continued was the middle two crimp. Which I also followed up by holding the uh, mono pockets with my pinkies, just to stretch them out a little bit. And lastly, I held a front two finger crimp, where I also stretched my pinkies afterwards. And that's it. This is what I did two times per day for 30 days. And the only difference was on climbing days, where I allowed myself to have a six hour window before and after with training my fingers. Now let's take a second to listen to how this affected Felix before we jump into the results of this experiment. And uh, I did this for a couple of months and uh, within the first month I just felt, my fingers felt healthier than they ever have before. Because I've always, when I've hangboarded, I've had like some min minor pain, like minor, like it feel, feels tweaky. And then after a month of this, not only did I increase my max hangs by like 10 kilos, I also just felt completely fine in my fingers. Uh, just didn't feel any pain or anything at all when I hangboarded. Mm. So yeah, that's my experience. <laughs> so just take that with a grain of salt. It's, it's just a one person experiment so yeah. far. Well, two now. <laughs> and two now, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Thank you for the input. <laughs> All right, now that you know how I structured my training, let's have a look at the actual results. And I'll say this already, these were just out of my mind crazy good. I was, yeah, I won't spoil too much, but I started off with a 14 millimeter crimp. And before the, before the experiment, I could hold it, as mentioned, for three seconds with about 48 kilograms and maybe around 40 for five. After the test, or I guess after the experiment, I could hold 67 kilograms for five seconds which is an insane increase of about 60% in added weight. After I'd held the small Beastmaker crimp, I hopped on over to the one-armed hang. And again, we have a whooping results of 14 seconds that I could hang off of this. Which, I guess, effectively means that I increased my strength by 2,600%. Well, not really, but still, it was a quite a big difference in how long I could hang. <laughs> the left arm wasn't quite as strong as the right arm, but I still managed to hold it for longer than I ever have before, which, you know, <laughs> I'm happy about. Last up on the test was to do the uh, small crimp hangs. I started off on the 6mm crimp, which I'd never ever been able to hold before in my entire climbing career. And now I could hold it for almost, almost 8 seconds, which is an undefinable, much better result than I'd gotten before. <laughs> Followed by that was the 8mm crimp, which, I don't know, I felt like I would never let go. I mean. Clearly, I did let go, but still, the fact that I could hold it for so long absolutely shocked me. And after I managed to hold this crimp for so long, I guess I decided to just call it quits. I didn't even feel like bothering to try the 10mm crimp because I had the results that I wanted and I was satisfied with them. Alright folks, so those were my pretty insane results. <laughs> As mentioned, we have a sample size of one, so don't try this at home. However, I will ask some other people to try this uh, method as well. And then I'm gonna make a follow-up video in like a month or maybe two if I'm being honest. Um, so if you don't want to miss that make sure you subscribe, click on that notification thing to not miss, on the miss out on the video. And yeah if you like this one give it a thumbs up and drop me a comment if you have any questions or critique or anything like that. Bye folks.